Hey everybody, this is Gary Yao. I'm here with Frank Lopez. Frank, how are you? Good, Gary. How are you? I'm great. Frank, let's continue this conversation about probate. Now, we mentioned that the best that having a will is not going to help you, you know, circumnavigate the probate part. However, it is a good idea to have a trust, you know, a trust where you have all your your properties. Now, is that the best way? Having a trust is the best way to avoid going to probate in case you pass on. I, I'm really, I really like the way you phrase that question, Gary, because it, it's it. To answer your question, yes, it is the best way. Mm. It is not a foolproof way. Interesting. And, and 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 this is where there's a lot of confusion. And and I'll be honest with you, I don't think that there's very much discussion about this with the people that draw up the trust which is usually a, it, it's a trust attorney that draws the trust up although there are companies that specifically will do just that and they may or may not be attorneys but they they you know they seem to do a, a good job but it, it comes up over and over again where somebody says well wait a minute we have a trust so we don't have to go to probate and 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 then i'll the first question I ask them is, okay, do you have a copy of the trust? Well, it's here somewhere. Okay, so can you get me a copy of the trust so we know, so we, we'll need it anyway, so can you get me a copy of the trust? And then the, the client comes back and says, we can't find. So mm -hmm. then the next question is, okay, well, can you go back to the attorney that prepared the trust for you and see if they can provide a copy? Mm -hmm. They go back to the attorney, the attorney, prepared the trust 15 years ago the attorney may or may not be may or may not even be still practicing yeah um, and and even if they were practicing what i see is that the answer is typically hey we're in the business of providing trusts we're not in the per business of, of saving the trust for you that's up to you and that you know like i said that just comes up so often gary that everybody thinks that they're covered that they're safe until you ask and then you actually go and you get a copy you you I, I'll, I'll actually get a copy of the, the the most recent deed and the deed shows that the property was deeded over to the family trust we just can't find the trust well could the could you find it in the in the uh, county records no no it's not recorded it's when what the only thing that's recorded is the deed mm. not the trust the trust is left up to you to keep it somewhere safe. The biggest oh. issue is that the person that's keeping it safe is usually the person pa that passed away. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and and finding the trust it becomes becomes an issue. So we know the trust existed. We could see that they recorded the property in the name of of the Gary Yao Family Trust. So the owner of the property is the Gary Yao Family Trust, but we just can't find the trust. And if we can't find the trust, we don't know, number one, who is going to be in charge when the person is no longer here. Who was left as successor trustee? Who's the person that's going to take over when the person that owned the property passed away? We don't know. So what happens then? Probate. Ah, uh, so we're going back to what we tried to avoid in the first place. So all yeah, that money yeah. spent creating this trust is for not. Yes, yes. And, and here's the worst part. Yeah, there was there was a lot of money spent to to draft the trust. Now you're going to spend anywhere from 15 to 30 to maybe even $45,000 because it has to go through probate. The only thing so, I'm thinking uh, uh, about this paper, right? Because this is this seems to be like a golden ticket. Like, wow, this pay, piece of paper is the difference between... Oh, my camera went off. But yeah, this is the difference between you having... To this property or or not it is it is quite discerning now my thing is i do have a, a family uh a box in the bank a safe box in the bank where uh I, I, we pay month i forgot how much was it where we put like you know like family heirlooms jewelry things like that you know like 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 rings and whatnot that would pass on from uh previous i guess parent generations Yes. What what do you suggest how to safeguard well, this piece of document in a yeah, box it, in the bank? 
Um, that's and those uh, that's a that's a good option is is a, a safety deposit box because when somebody passes away they usually go will go through their keys and safety usually the, I think the safety deposit box might even say what bank it's with so so yes that would be that would be one one option um but the, the reason so you know and, and I'll you know I'll leave it up to our audience to decide hey what's the best way of storing it but I just can't stress the importance of storing it in a place where everybody knows that it's there because I, I, I'm I'm going to give you an example of how often it comes up the title company that we use lawyers title free plug for them um because they do such a great job with probate so I deal with with title with lawyers title and their probate department all the time and this comes up so often that the title person from lawyers and I are, are have picked around the idea that we would like to start a a family trust recording system okay where where we would be like the we'd be like the google of family trust mm-hmm. that when somebody passes away you type in you, you type in you know family trust um you go to our website and we will have the the recorded documents there but oh. you know so and, and and we haven't done anything with it because it's just you know we have it we both think it's a great idea because that's how often it comes up it brings that me to us so, sorry to interrupt it brings me to the second question though i was thinking like what about this because the document doesn't have to be on paper right it doesn't have to be a physical one can i scan it and put it on my google drive nowadays everything's on the on the cloud um uh, you know gary this is a question i'm gonna have to get back to you on but he's with the title company so i'm assuming that it is scannable but the title company does want to see the original trust oh. they will ask for the they will ask for the original trust so so now the question is what how do you store it you know so that the title company will still call, will still say maybe you know maybe you you scan it and it's the the notary's ink is in purple ink so you could see it's original i don't know that's or or maybe you know i i don't know and that's a question like i said that i'm going to have to uh, i'm glad we're having this conversation because i need to know that as well um yeah. but we've had we've had other issues where they do find the family trust but it's not the original it's a copy yes yeah yes so... and then yeah and then it becomes such a, 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 a you know issue with the title company because they insist on the original but the bottom line is it's just that's how often it comes up and you know I'll I'll tell you you know my my thoughts the companies that provide this the attorneys that provide this are doing a disservice and not telling Gary hey by the way now that you have your trust now it has to be placed somewhere in safekeeping because somebody is going to need it when you're gone Yeah. So you got to think about that. And yeah. there's and, and from what I could see there's no discussion about that at all. They, you know, you, the 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 document is is, you know, you, you, you they give the the uh the property owner the original uh it's notarized um in and the end of story. No yeah. discussion at all of of hey, if your if your family can't find this the day that you're no longer here, guess what? This is worth nothing i'd be scared of storing that in my house because well we, we all have paper yeah. every day we receive paper from whatever it is from coupons to 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 junk mail to anything how will you keep up with that well you know okay but you know it's it's like any other important document you put it wherever your passport is you can't scan your passport it's got to be an original passport though Well, okay, but American property owners should have passports. Um, I'm just saying like uh, like this is one thing that I my myself personally I don't own anything of value on my in my house. It's like I, I even tell like uh, when I used to have roommates when I was single like, I was tell like the only thing of value that I have is my TV and that is a yeah, depreciated value. <laughs> like really, it's nothing of value in my house. Well, like okay, that. but and, and and again, that's why it's important to be having this discussion because it comes up that often. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, I'm basically putting this out there to the the attorneys of the trust attorneys of of, of the world and and the other eight, uh, companies that provide this that that discussion needs to be had because it's because it, we're going through probate way more than we have to with clients that should never have to go through probate but are mm-hmm. for that very simple reason so that's the first issue and, and i want to move this move on because that's right. not the only issue. i would like to talk so, about, about this so but we're out of time. time is off so we can continue this discussion oh, next man. time so i'm just getting started <laughs> there are, i know there you, are... you're you're getting fired up so i can see that but we have to say yeah, that for next so, time well i have to pick up next ne- on our next call but that is not the only time that a trust doesn't help there are others and it, again it comes up very frequently we need to continue this conversation <laughs> Frank if people want to get a hold of you how can they get a hold of you you can always go to my website franklopezbroker at gmail.com I'm, I'm sorry at franklopez.com um, or you can always uh, call me at uh, 626-289-1111 Frank thank you and I will talk to you next time okay 